Welcome to the Cleric Corner. My name is Riker, and on this channel we talk about all things Dungeons and Dragons, and we tap into our higher powers to create worlds that are more unique and stories that are more impactful. This week we eagerly await the new book, The Wild Beyond the Witchlight from the Wizards of the Coast, where we get to explore the Feywild in 5th edition like we never have before. And although I don't know specifically everything that's inside, I do want to do our best to prepare for the Feywild as best as we can. So in preparation, let's take a few minutes and talk about how we can make the Feywild a little more Fey and a little more wild. So even though the player characters might not remember once they leave the Feywild, your players will never forget. Now, in certain moments in your campaign, your players will have the opportunity to travel to far-off realms and worlds that are so different from their own. And when they do, they expect these worlds to be different. They expect to be surprised and find things that are unexpected. So, do you deliver? Or do you struggle to find ways that you can create that wonder and the impact that you want for your players? Because, I'm sorry, the Feywild is just a little bit more than just a pretty forest. So by the end of this video, I'm going to go over six ways to make the Feywild more memorable and impactful for your players. And my hopes is that when you run the Wild Beyond the Witchlight or your own homebrew campaign where you enter the Feywild, that it will truly bring it to life. So make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can spread the good word of Dungeons and Dragons. And please, if you come up with even more ways to make the Feywild more unique, comment below. And if this video gets to 200 likes by my next video, I will take everything that I'm going to go over today and implement mechanics, put it in a PDF, and then offer it to you. If you like free D&D mechanics and want to be notified, you can find the link to my Discord below in the description. So, the scene is set. The players enter the Feywild. What does it look like? What does it feel like? How is it different? My first tip to make the Feywild better is to use the senses. And I mean beyond the experiences of what they had in the material plane. Because they haven't literally lived in this plane and evolved their senses to it, it will feel, smell, taste, etc. very, very different. I imagine as they take their first breath that the air feels syrupy, thick, but crisp like an apple. And as they're walking through it, it almost feels like water brushing up against their skin. And they smell of baked goods and nostalgia or whatever their childhood smells like with no visible building in sight. And as they smack their lips together, they taste candy? But then they look around and look at trees and the plants in the sky, and although they're similar colors, they seem to shift between hues. The trees almost going from a light green to an aquamarine. And instead of the trunks growing straight up, they're zigzag or spiral. And as you hear the wind blowing through the clearing, you almost hear a faint whistled jig, and the grass seems to dance in response. But in this brief description, I made sure to use all five senses. I didn't just tell them that they were trees in a blue sky and it smelled good, but I used their sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing to tell a different story. And now, of course, all of these descriptive words can change depending on the area of the Feywild that you're in, and I do get that a lot of people aren't as confident with their descriptive words. To that, I say, write them down, practice, read very descriptive books, but all you really have to do is answer the question, how is this different? Now this leads into our second tip, and if you're still trying to figure out exactly what your Feywild looks like, take inspiration from movies and TV shows and similar things that depict a type of Feywild. And this will certainly give your game a unique edge, and you can probably use any of these titles that I've listed here. You're welcome to pause the video and take a screenshot for your game. And you're more than welcome to add more in the comments if you think of them. But let's take Alice in Wonderland, for example. As Alice falls into a hole trying to chase down a chronomancy rabbit folk, the world that she dives into seems to depict things very literally. A dandelion is literally a flower with a cat face. A birdcage? 
A bird cage. A cage that's a bird. Or a bird that's a cage. Either one. And so many other beasts that are so juxtaposed in an interesting way, Alice herself stopped at every turn to stand in awe of the new creatures that it suggested. So why not put that in your campaign? What does a weeping willow or a butterfly look in your Feywild? Now, continuing with the Alice in Wonderland example, let's talk about our next tip, domains. Just as we got Domains of Dread in the last book, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, there are similar Domains of Delight that happen in the Feywild. In both regions, these domains are heavily influenced by their ruler and is often a personification of the creature. And while the Domains of Dread usually have a Dark Lord, Feywilds usually have some sort of Archfey. In Alice's case, I would consider the Queen of Hearts in Archfey and her domain being cards. And under her influence, even her guards were a personification of who she was. But if you don't like to play golf with flamingos, you can also pull inspiration for domains from the White Witch from Chronicles of Narnia, the Emerald City from the Wizard of Oz himself, or you can take inspiration from other things like Candyland. In a previous game of mine, my DM actually created a domain that was entirely made up of sandwiches. And why? Because it's the Feywild. It makes sense there. So for this next tip, I'll actually split into two parts because there's so much juice here. And to preface, we know that the Feywild is a place of heightened emotion. Emotion is very, very powerful in this plane of existence. But the question is, how much does this emotion influence your players. So imagine with me, you have your party of adventurers trudging through a fey swamp and keep getting stuck after failed saving throw after failed saving throw. And this player lets out an exasperated ugh. And in reaction, smoke starts spilling out of his ears and his skin starts to get hot. Or if the pet blink dog that your party adopted sacrifices itself to save your party, the ranger might go off and cry, and her skin might turn a dark blue. If you want emotion to have even more of a significance, you can even roll on wild surge tables. And if it were me, I would actually have a wild surge for each different emotion. And what's great about another book, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, is it actually gives you great tables for regions like this in the categories supernatural regions and magical phenomena. But now hear me out. What if the players, instead of them influencing the Feywild with their emotions, the Feywild influences their emotions? For instance, a heavy storm cloud rolls in and you describe that all of your players out of nowhere feels melancholic as they start thinking of things that make them really, really sad. And this would be perfect for all your players who love roleplay. And for those who prefer a little bit more combat, you can always make constant lair actions where in the heat of a battle, the Feywild can literally cast spells on your players like Haste, Slow, Enlarge Reduce, or Polymorph. Now let's talk even on a bigger scale. Not how emotion affects your players, but how emotion affects the Feywild world. It is also said that the Feywild is a reflection of the material plane. So what happens to the Feywild when there is an excess of emotion that happens on the plane that it reflects? So what happens in the Feywild when in the material world a war happens? And sadly, women and children die in the face of that and a city gets taken over. What if the fear and the anger from the families in the material plane is so strong that it creates a jabberwock on the reflection on the other side. Or on the flip side, where a union of two people are so powerful and there's so much love that it's strong enough to cross planes and turn a sickly swamp into a blooming flower garden. I'd also like to think that we put a lot of gravity on family heirlooms or personal items or pets, so much so that they might have a sentient counterpart in the Feywild. Maybe that's where the birdcage came from. Tweety was a good bird. One other constant magical force in the Feywild, besides emotion, is change. So tip number four is an exploitation of the fact that exposure to the Feywild too long might create magical transformations. 
For example, we can look at the Aladrin, an elf race that have been in the Feywild for quite some time. And because of the magic of the Feywild, they have personified the seasons of summer, fall, spring, and winter. And in fact, each morning they can wake up as a different one. But the Fey doesn't stop there. It's also grafted a lot of humanoid races with animals. And of course, this depends on the lore in your world, but things like centaurs, satyrs, or even furbolgs, who because of extreme exposure to the Feywild over time, have taken on more bovine-like qualities. What if your players were in some sort of magical hotspot, or a harsh emotional wind that passes through? And because of that concentration, changes are sped up. And as they race toward an archfey to try to reverse the condition, they're sprouting dog ears or a donkey tail or their skin starts to turn into bark. Or, to take another one from Alice in Wonderland, what if they slowly start shrinking? Now, one thing really does bother me about the Feywild, and it's that a lot of the times you don't feel the full effects of it until after you actually leave. Because when you leave the Feywild, you roll a wisdom save, and depending on if you succeed or fail, you forget all that happened on your trip there. And when you get back, it could be a few minutes from when you left, or it could be quite a few years. Shouldn't, though, the magical effects be more concentrated when you're actually inside the magical realm? So here's my next tip, more saves. Shouldn't it have more consequences to be in a realm that's different from your own? A land that's so foreign your body doesn't even know how to react. So why not have these same effects that would normally happen when you return home happen on a daily basis, where each time you wake up, you have to roll to save to see if you remember the day before, or that our bodies age faster or slower depending only to revert back to normal upon returning to the material world. Or you could even make some sort of charm table, a lot like madness works in Dungeons and Dragons. But of course, instead of the far realm, it's the Feywild. How fun would it be to roll to make your players act out more emotionally? Or that they actually have to choose into the bonds or flaws that their character has. And depending on their level of charm that they had while staying there, does change the difficulty class when they do return home. The more the charm, the less likely they are to remember. Now, with all of these tips, I'm sure that you won't use all of them, but I do hope that I at least spurred your thinking to add just a little bit more Fey into your Feywild. And if you like these kind of videos for inspiration, go ahead and check out this video here. And again, if this video gets 200 likes, I will be making a PDF with all of these ideas in my Discord. So like, share, hit that notification bell, and in the meantime, go out there and spread the good word of D&D and make the world a better place both on and off your tables. See you in the next one.